wanted to all of you, we are grateful and thankful to God for the blessing of God has granted us another week, another 168 hours of this past. We have seen again the grace of God, the amazing wonder, the splendor of all that he is and all that he does. And so we are thankful again to the other and the armies, our homes, some of us who are in this particular building, but wherever we are, we have come for the purpose to give God the praise, the glory, and the honor that he so rightfully deserves. Uh, we get ridden out, get ridden out. The service start with asking that we want to be pleased uh, when all is said and done in this day. Now we're going to start off our service with Saul and Anthony and Keith are going to lead us in our devotion for this morning. We'll continue moving on with song, and then we're going to hear a word from the Lord as God will grant it to us. So, choir, let us join in together. Sing about God's amazing grace. in sin shaped in iniquity you made me to believe and liberated me nothing I've done or could ever do to deserve your love it's all because of you where would I be where would I be without, without your grace, extended favor and kindness toward me? I will never deserve it or ever earn it. You're my love, you're my love, you're my love, praise. social distancing in place we wear masks on our face Lord you want us to see yeah, yeah. our own human vulnerability because of your grace I'm standing here today over and over over and over you keep making a way where would I be? Where would I be? Without your grace. Without your grace. Extended favor. Extended favor. And kindness toward me. I will never deserve it. Or ever earn it. You're Oh, I'm under me. Even though my faith. 
faith may waver, still show me your favor, your grace, 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 it was your grace, woke me up this morning, your grace, started me on my way. Laid me down last night. Your grace, your grace. make me feel all right. Your grace, your when I'm up. Your grace, when I'm down. Your grace, when I'm in. Your grace, when I'm out. Your grace, nobody but Jesus. Your grace, nobody but Jesus. Your grace, your grace, your grace, your 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 grace, 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 Thank you for your grace. all because of God's grace we ought to praise him today because he deserves all the honor all the glory and all the praise where would we be this morning what what would we be doing if it were not for his amazing grace thank you Lord for your consideration this morning I'll be reading from St. John chapter 1 verses 1 through 14, and I'll be reading from the New International Version. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming unto the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. My Lord. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believe in his name, yes. he gave the right to become children of God. Yes. Children Thank born not of natural descent, yes, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. Mm. He, we have seen his glory. The glory of the one and only Son, yes. who came from the Father, yes. full of grace and truth. Grace. Oh God, mm. thank you for your grace yes. and you. your mercy yes. that you have bestowed upon us. Yes, God. If it had not been for your grace, Lord God, oh, where God. would we be? Lord, our feeble minds can't even wrap our minds around how yes, great Lord, yes. and wonderful you are. Yes, Lord. Lord, you covered us while we were sleeping and slumbering. Thank you, Father. you covered us when, we see, when, we, when dangers were in our face, when we couldn't even see them. Thank you, Lord. 
Lord, we thank you because you are so powerful and so awesome. We thank you for being God. We thank you for being who you are in our life. Lord God, we come right now asking, Lord, that you would please forgive us for our sins. Cover us right now, God, and we ask that you would create in us a clean heart and renew a right spirit within us. Lord God, we love you right now. We come to you right now with bowed heads and humble hearts. We come to you, Father, from the north, south, the east, and the west. We come right now, Lord, because we know that we cannot call on no one else but your name. Lord, we need you right now. There's a lot going on around us in this world. But we thank you because it doesn't catch you off guard. It's not like you don't know what's going on. You told us in your word that you will never leave us or forsake us. So we are relying on that word. But we are coming right now, Father God, praying in accessory prayers for those that are dealing with sickness and illness all around the land and country. We pray, Lord, that you would bless those that are in leadership, Father God. We pray that you would bless those children as they go back to school. Bless those teachers and administrators. We pray right now, God, for every church door that's open in your name. We pray, Lord, that you would just bless and touch every pastor and preacher that's going to be preaching your uncompromising gospel this morning. Father God, we thank you for what you have done. You've allowed us to see another day. You brought us this far right now, Lord. If if this minute was our last minute, we're going to take this time to say thank you, Lord. We're going to take this time to praise and worship you while we have the opportunity. Lord, we love you right now. We love you in spite of what's going on around us. We love you in spite of the circumstances that may be in our life today. Lord, we love you because of your grace and your mercy. We love you right now because of all that you have done. Lord, we pray right now, again, that you would just continue to bless this service. Bless the one that's going to bring your word. Bless the one that's going to bring your Sunday school. Bless each and every person that's listening online, whether it be on the radio, on the phone. We're asking that you would touch them right now. We're asking that you would open up their hearts and their minds right now, Lord, that that someone that don't know you can come crying, what can I do to be saved? This is not a show. This is not done just so you can see our clothes. This is not done so that you can see our production. This is done so someone can come crying, what can I do to be saved? Who is this Jesus that you guys are talking about? I want to know more about him. So we ask that you would open up minds and hearts right now. It's in Jesus' name we pray these prayers. Amen and thank God. you to gather the children today right now at this moment bring the children in so we can praise with our kids clap your hands Anything. If I run over here, 
look up, up, up. I know he's real when I look down, down, down. I believe what I found when I look in God's word and I search for him, he rewards me. Cause he loves me. When I look up, up, up. I know that he's real when I look down, down, down. I believe what I found when I look in God's word and I search for him. Oh! 
Whatever needs to be done, whenever it needs to be done, exactly the way that it needs to be done. And so I know again we're going through our season of pandemic, we're going through our season of economic defaults and the like, but I believe that all of us can testify we got proof that Jesus will. Can I get one witness out there? that will attest to the fact that when we consider 22 weeks, 22 weeks of us being in this state that we have been in. But you know what, I want, I want everybody to think about this. I know it's been, we say five months that we've been going through what we are going through. Uh, but I, uh, I can remember church, I can remember church in 1966. I can remember church 1966 at the, the Ninth Baptist Church in Ville Platte, Louisiana. I can remember sitting in my Sunday school classes. Uh, I can remember uh, vacation Bible school, auxiliary building outside of the, the, the church. Um, then I can remember, I actually can remember see myself the day that I Come, quote unquote, came down the aisle and trusted Christ as my Savior. 
I think this is around April, somewhere around that time of 1968. And uh, we came to Houston. Uh, we were in the building uh, to the, uh, the west of us right now. And uh, we were in that building until 1985. We move into this building. And the reality is, I would say I have done church a certain kind of way, or I had been doing church a certain kind of way, as far as I can remember, from 1966 until March of uh, 2020. So, so when I think about that, we're talking about 50 years plus, right? Am I, am I right, my mathematicians? So, so guess what? If, if God has determined for these last five months that I got to do things a little different, I'm not going to complain because he's given me 54 years. Yeah, he gave me 54 years to be able to celebrate him and rejoice in him a certain kind of way with everybody around us. Uh, but he has made a change, y'all. God has allowed this change to take place. And we don't want to bemoan that. We don't want to complain about that because the reality is we said it in the song. He treated us better than we deserve. Where would I be without your grace? And we, and we can count on the fact that we can make it through. We've made it through this pandemic. Why? Because Jesus, Jesus will. I know he will. He said he would. He'll fight our battle if we just keep still. I know that he will. Yes, Jesus will. I want to ask you to turn, turn your attention to Psalm 133. That is our reading for today. That is our reading for today. We're going to pray uh, our way out today as far as intercessory prayer. I'm going to ask Brother Edward to prepare his heart to uh, lead us in prayer as we get ready to leave today. But Psalm 133, this is, our, this is our reading. If you're following Good Shepherd, if you're following the reading assignment or the reading model that has been placed before us, we're going through the Psalms, and today... We're looking at Psalm 133, and I thought it was just apropos. I am so grateful, thankful that God is allowing these various opportunities to preach in various books of the Bible, just going through the study that we're going through. But what we find out in God's word, no matter where we read, is relative for us today. Amen. A psalm that most of us are familiar with, and the word of God says to you and I, Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious oil upon the head running down on the beard. The beard of Aaron running down on the edge of his garments. It is like the dew of Hermon descending upon the mountains of Zion. And there the Lord commanded the blessing, life forevermore. Just to tag the text we're going to use as a subject today, the uniqueness of unity. The uniqueness of unity. One, one of the things that has happened in this pandemic uh, is that we have not been able to visit each other uh, as we had been used to doing prior to uh, March of this year. It's been a kind of a freedom that we've had just to be able to gather at each other's homes or go from place to place together, whether it's restaurants and didn't have to worry about social distancing and the like. And that is an element that I believe that most of us miss. One of the things that our family does, um, uh, we, we uh, have the, again the, the Martin family, the Phil family, the um, Skinner family, Scott, all of us gather together normally the first Sunday of every month. <clears throat> and we, we just have a great time together at, at different houses we go to and uh, we eat together, we laugh together. There are sometimes we cry together. Um, after eating, Stan and I normally go to um, a place called Peaceful Rest. Um, and Stan pretty much, he goes there every time we gather together. It's kind of a, it's just known he's going to go to peace for rest. I, on the other hand, I, I, I visit a place called Greater Rest. 
uh, from time to time. And then after, after we get through, um, after we wake up, I'm sorry, after we worship, uh, we usually have the discussion about, you know, what happened at the service. And uh, he gives his rendition and I give my rendition. And then, and then uh, it, we, we just have a great time with that. Well, again, the family gathers us together. There are times that we sing together. We laugh together. It's a lot of noise that's going on one place or the other. And there's something unique about that. There's a joy that we all gain from just all of the noise, all of what others would call chaos, all what others would say some things that y'all laugh at. I just can't believe y'all laughing at that. Uh, we'll often talk about things my mom did, and boy, we just get a joy out of that and all of that. So we miss out right now on having that uniqueness of being able to get together. It is to that end, it's to that, 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 that idea that David speaks to in what is called a song of ascents. As a matter of fact, in the original language, that word would actually be used, the song of ascents of David. And then it would say, behold, that song of ascents was, was normally attributed to, most scholars will believe, that the children of Israel had a responsibility of Going back to Jerusalem three times a year, according to Exodus 23, if you were to read that, 14 through 17, they went back to Jerusalem three times a year. All of the males were commanded by God, and they would make that journey from wherever they were. Because remember, they represented what the 12 tribes of Israel who had land scattered all over the place. And so they had to travel, in some cases, the, 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 the tribes of Dan, would tra the tribes of Asher, would travel some 100 to 120 miles away. And they would all come to Jerusalem for the Passover or the unleavened bread. They would come there again for the first fruits at the beginning of the season when they would begin to uh, bring in the harvest. And then they would come again at the last part of the year when they were in the end gathering, when all of the, the vegetables and, and, and fruits that they ate were now being brought in. All of the harvest was being brought in. And so now, when they would travel geographically, the area where Jerusalem was, there was always a sense that one was going up. There was always a sense the way that they traveled based on the Mediterranean Sea that was over again on the west side and Araba that was uh, midways between that and Jerusalem. They were always moving up. So it was referred to as a song of a sense that they were ascending up to the city of Zion. They were ascending up to Jerusalem and there they were going into what was there the presence of God it was where the ark of the covenant was it was where the holy place was and three times a year they went for various feasts giving God thanks and recognition for what God had done and they were moving up physically to the city of Zion but these songs were written not only for a physical travel but they were also to move up in their minds. That was geography, but that was also theology, whereby they were to think about God as they were moving up toward the city of Zion. They, they, they did not have, they did not have as we would have the, the privilege then of, of, of worship every, every uh, week at the temple like we do. They, they lived in various parts of the country. They had their tribal lands that they lived in. But for three times a year, all of the people would gather together. You know, you know that song we like to sing, when all God's children get together? What a time, what a time, what a time. And they would have a unique time in gathering together as the people of God. So therefore, David, when he was the king, when he is this great psalmist that God has made him, he has an opportunity to view what is going on as the people are coming from various places, traveling up to the city of Zion, traveling up to the place Jerusalem. They are there, and as they are traveling, he sees them coming along, and the Holy Spirit leads him 
to pen this particular song. And notice how he starts. He starts off, if I were to use our common language today, he would say, hey, hey. Most of us don't like folk to say hey to us, but hey is normally a word of exaltation. It is a word to grab one's attention. He would say, take heed. If that, that is the language that we would use, take heed. Behold, pay attention, not a quick glance. Make it a stare. Pay attention. Don't, don't, don't be in a hurry. Don't be in a rush. Pay attention. Slow yourself down. Don't be so quick to go to the next app. Stop, slow down, pay attention, chill, cool yourself, pay attention, behold, look and see how, how good, how good. That word, that word good is the word that, that would, could literally describe some of my, some of my relatives in, in Louisiana. That word in Hebrew is the word tob, tob. The word tob literally means uh, pleasant, it means beautiful, it means it's delightful, it means it is joyful, it is precious. Behold, look, pay attention, how good he says it's, it's a precious thing, it's a, it's a wonderful thing to behold, it's a wonderful thing to look at. Behold, how good and how pleasant, that word, that word, the word, a pleasant as the word naim, and the word naim here deals with it's sweet, it's lovely, it's 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 agreeable, it's acceptable, it is favorable. Behold, look and see how good. Watch this, and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Look, pay attention, pay attention, pay attention. And the reason that, the reason, the reason that, 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 that David would, would give that much attention to it is because when you look at the life of David, David could literally look at brotherhood from a three-dimensional view. What, what I mean by that? David, David was the son, he was the youngest son of eight boys in the family of Jesse. And when you think about his family, David had, did not have a great experience of unity within his family. Bible readers, y'all, y'all, y'all remember, you recall, you recall, you recall, you recall when, when Goliath, when Goliath uh, uh, was, was on the way, wanted to battle with the children of Israel, and the Bible says that all of the soldiers, all in the military, they were afraid, they were scared, they were literally shaking in their proverbial boots. The Bible says that one day David comes along and when they're getting ready to go into battle, his, his older brother looks at him, his name is Eliab, his older brother look at him and he said, look at you full of pride and insolence. Why have you come here? His father had sent him to bring he, uh, Eliab and his other two brothers that could go to war. He had brought them there to bring them some food in order that they might enjoy and that they might be refreshed while they were at war. But David had a different experience of unity where three of his older brothers actually did not have a proper view of him. He, he is the youngest son of Jesse but then David now becomes a father and he had many children from various wives and when you read the record there also in 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 second Samuel it gives us an understanding that that David had this he's the father if you would of blended families where he had a lot of boys. He had one girl by the name of Tamar and that came a time that the oldest boy named Ammon lusted in his heart, raped and then disrespected his sister Tamar. Uh, in the event, eventually uh, 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 Absalom who was a, again, a brother of Ammon, again, a brother again of another family, of course. Uh, the Bible says that he was angry at Ammon and then he concocted a plan, had Ammon murdered in order to revenge the disrespect of Tamar. 
Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh yeah, we, 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 we see, we see, we see that, that David in his perspective as a son had a family that, that was not necessarily unified. From the perspective of a father, he did not have a family that was necessarily unified. And that, that, that is a lesson for you and I today that, that if unity is to be in our lives, we all have to have a desire for it. We, we got a desire to be together. And I would say, I would say today, if there's any father that's out there that know that you have a blended family situation, don't wait till the funeral, brother. I tell you, those of us who are pastors, we have seen some atrocious things that have happened at funerals when there are different families involved. And sometimes one of those families don't know nothing about another family. I'm guess what I'm saying. If you are a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, brother, while we're going through this season of pandemic, it would be a good time to set your house in order. Uh, it would be a good time to get some things straight because David is seeing that unity is a good thing. But his experience of unity from his vantage point as a son and as a father is opposite of what God desired. But then he also, he also sees uh, unity. He also sees brotherhood, not only from the perspective as a son of Jesse or as a father of many children, but he also sees unity as a king. And as a king, as a king, as a king, he's got, he's got a whole lot of folk. There's a whole lot of folk whole lot of people that have a whole lot of different attitudes and a whole lot of different ways of thinking and they got a whole lot of baggage that they bring in. You got the tribe of Dan, the tribe of Nephtali, you got the tribe of Manasseh, the tribe of Ephraim, the tribe of Judah, the tribe of Benjamin, the tribe of Asher. You got all of those tribes that gather together and he understands that everybody got some kind of attitude. Come on, y'all, y'all know what I'm talking about. We've all experienced family reunions, and, and the reality is that everybody at the family reunion ain't nice. Every, everybody that come ain't coming for a reunion. Everybody that come ain't coming because they got the right thing in mind. And here they are, they're gathered together, and he is demonstrating that the desire that God wishes for his people is that they dwell together in unity he knows that because when he reads Leviticus chapter 19 uh, verse 18 he would say you're not to take vengeance on your brother but you're to love your neighbor as you love yourself so he understands from the vantage point as a king who has a copy of the word of God. He understands what God desires and God's desire is that we dwell together, spend some time. Listen, listen, I don't know who's listening today, but if you, if you are going through this pandemic and you still got at some at odds with your brother or your sister, biological, adopted, foster, whatever it may be. Even if you are a member of the body of Christ, this is a time that God is saying to us, thank you, Warren, for the words of that song. God is showing us our own human vulnerability. And right now, we got a time to get some stuff together with one another. We, we don't have time to do some of the things that we're used to doing. Right now would be a good time to sit down, write a letter. Some of you need to say, I'm sorry about, say you're sorry. Right now would be a good time to make a phone call and have a discussion. Right now would be a good time to go to a park, make sure you got your mask on, uh, observe social distancing, but talk to that person that you may not in your family be getting along with. Because God is showing us our human vulnerability. But the psalmist says, behold, look, pay attention how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. The first thing he's saying, take heed. Take heed. Take heed. And you would ask yourself the question, why, 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 Lord? Why do we, why do we, what, what does unity show us? What does this togetherness show us? What does this oneness show us and help it's important to understand this, that when we talk about unity, 
Unity is not something that you and I decide what it is. <clears throat> Unity for us has already been determined by God as to, as to what unity actually looks like. Listen, listen, listen. I know what some of y'all are saying, you know, whenever my family get together, I'm there. But I don't, I don't really talk to nobody. You know, I'm there. I show, I show myself. I make a cameo. I stay there for about 10 minutes. And then I leave. Now, nobody can say I didn't come. But God is saying, no, unity says that you dwell together. You, 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 you dwell together. That, that word dwell means, literally means to sit down. You, you know how it is when you, when you sit down. That means you're not really, you're not really in a hurry to go nowhere. You, you're just kind of relaxing. You're kind of refreshing. You're kind of stable you're not in a hurry to move on of course when you're there and you're on your feet it always give you a chance to always say hey well y'all i've been I'm, i guess i'm gonna have to i'm gonna, I'm gonna have to go up check you no know, peace out check y'all check y'all later but when you dwell that means you abide you you stay there you are stable you are steady you are not in a hurry. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity because unity must have a unifier in our case, our unifier is God, the Holy Spirit. He is the one that brings you and I as brothers and sisters together. So God is saying to us, behold, take heed to how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is. I like that in verse 2. Notice, notice how he moves on. It, it, it. it, it well, well, actually, in the, in the, in the, in the, uh, in the original language, it would, it would do it this way. For brethren to dwell together in unity, watch this, like the precious oil, like the precious oil. So, so, so what, what, is, what, is, what, is, what is unique about unity? Again, not only something that we take heed to, but, but unity, it, it's holy. It, it, it's holy. It's, it's holy. Notice, notice what he says. It is like the precious oil upon the head running down on the beard. The beard of Aaron running down on the edge, wow, on the edge of his garment. It's just, it's just flowing, folk. Run it down. So what the idea here is that in Exodus chapter 30, God had determined that there was this special perfume, ointment, that Moses was to make or the perfumers were to make, the refiners were to make, and it was an oil that was prescribed only for the priests. God would say nobody else was to make it. If you made it, you would find yourself dead. It was never to be replicated. It was never to be reproduced. It had to only be used by the priests. And it was the, the oil that was used for anointing whenever they would come together in these various feasts for celebration and in particular, when they would come for the Day of Atonement, it was the oil, again, representing the wholeness of the Holy Spirit. They would pour that oil. And now understand, when they talked about pouring the oil, folk, we're not talking about a cup. You know, just a, just a couple of ounces. No, he's talking about really pouring it on. In, 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 in other words, in other words, they, 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 they needed a lot of oil because they were dry. That, that, that's Lee, that's, that's Lee Skinner. They, 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 they were dry in their attitude toward one another. They were dry in their attitude toward God. So that oil represented refreshing. It represented, it represented wholeness. It represented the presence of the Holy Spirit. Watch this. They would pour that oil on Aaron, and that oil would begin to flow from his head, and it would eventually fall on his beard. Oh, and they pour, and it's so thick that it would fall, and it would go down on his garments, and it would flow all the way down on his sides. It would go down on his feet. But notice, notice, here's the reality. That oil always stayed together, and it had a wonderful fragrance that the more oil that you poured, the better it smelled. Mm, the more oil you poured, the better 
its smell, it was, it was an enticing, it was enticing in a, in a nice way, in a kind way. In other words, that you could, you could f- smell it even when you were far away. Yeah, yeah, every now, every now and then, I, I think folk know I got some allergies, I got allergies. And according to the doctors, I got every kind of allergy you can imagine. They say I got pet allergy, plant allergy, tree allergy. I don't know if they were telling the truth, but I know I gave them some money. They gave a test, and they tell me I got every kind of mad allergy you can imagine. And there are sometimes it's a little bit worse, Raymond, than other times. And there are some times, man, I get ready on a Sunday morning, like every Sunday morning, like this, this Sunday morning. And I'm in my study most of the time. I get, you know, get ready before sugar. does. And right about the time she's getting ready to come out, I go down the hall, and I hit it. I say, oh, oh, here she is smelling as good as she can be smelling, but I'm getting ready to sneeze as a result of her smelling. But the fragrance of that perfume, it has a way of penetrating. Somebody ought to get what I'm saying right here. That all was so beautiful. That all was so holy. That all was so intense in its fragrance that, that, that no matter what part of Aaron it touched, he was all there all over. Can I get a witness in here? It was together. It was on his head. It was on his neck. It was on his beard. It was on his shoulder. It was on his side. It was on his thigh. It was downtown to his feet. It was all over. And how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity like the precious ointment that ran down Aaron's beard. All the way down to the edge of his garment. Y'all, what would it be like right now if those of us who are the people of God, even though we can't gather together like we do, if we would all just come together in our attitude, come together in our gratitude, come together in our altitude, come together in our heart, come together in our mind, what would God do with you and I? It ran down on his beard all the way down to the edge of his garment. It was dripping wet. It was a fragrance. And listen, listen, folk. One of the things you got to know, people, people may not, they may not, may not notice you got a Bible. But they will watch how you live. And what we want, the sweet fragrance of the Spirit of God to sow protrude our society that they may not call us Christians but they'll know there's something different about us than the world we got to come together in unity yeah if you living in an apartment and every 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 week folk thinking about calling 911 on you if you living in a house and you the one throwing the COVID party? Can, can I get a witness? I'm talking about as believers. That's not the kind of unity that God prescribes. It's holy. It's different. It's separate from that of the world. I'm convinced. I'm convinced. Skinner, Scott, uh, Fields, Martins, we get together, man. Uh, 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 the queue is there. We get together. We have a great time. And you would swear if you pass by our house, it must be a party going on in there. But it, but it's songs about Jesus. We're laughing about things that we remember in the past that brought us joy and. And, 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 and we're getting along with one another. It's not like nobody's there. don't really want to be there. We are having unity. And I got to admit, there are some times we are thrown. It ain't always perfect. But oh, how beautiful it is when it is that sense of unity, that sense of togetherness, that sense of oneness. He said, he said, take heed. Then he said, it's holy. Here's the final thing he say is healthy. Oh, yeah. The uniqueness of unity is that it's healthy, y'all. It's healthy to get along with folk. <laughs> it's, 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 it's healthy to be at one with the folk in your house. 
It's healthy to be in oneness with your brother, with your sister, biological, uh, adopted, no matter who it is, whether it's the church. It doesn't matter. It's a healthy thing to live in unity with one another. How do we know that? Notice how he describes it in verse 3. He says, like the dew of Hermon, descending upon the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord commanded the blessing, life forevermore. I love that, y'all. The dew of Hermon, the dew of Hermon, the dew of Hermon. That, that, that's, a, that's a mountain, that's a mountain on, on the side of the, 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 the mountain of Hermon, whereby, again, snow covered at certain parts of the year. And because of the temperatures of that area, you have hot days and really cool nights. Kind of like what we're going through right now. Have, I don't know if some of y'all have noticed, when you, uh, when you wake up in the morning, you got a lot of humidity. Sometimes on your windows, you're thinking, why in the world we got all of this condensation that's going on? It's because why the, we got hot nights. And then all of a sudden, the temperature doesn't change a whole lot. It changes enough to cause condensation. But here's the deal. In that place, they had hot nights, and then based upon the mountain, it was cold in the mountains. So now, when that heat and that cold hit each other, what would happen is that the dew on the mountain was very thick. According, according again to Israel, when you look at a, 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 a Jewish calendar, they, they have 360 days. And so... It was thick with dew 250 days a year. So now, imagine if the dew is up on the mountain and it's very thick. When it begins to come down, it's got vegetation on the side of the mountain. And the dew from the mountain that's coming down on Hermon is now giving life. To the vegetation that's on the mountain. Why? Because the dew is flowing down on the mountain. Watch this. Watch this. It, it was so fertile. It was so fertile that God would say to Israel. God would say to Israel that, that every year, every, for six years, you were to plant uh, your harvest. On the seventh year, you let the, the land rest. On the eighth year, you had to plant again. But in the seventh year, they couldn't plant anything. But the land was so fertile that even though they didn't plant anything, the crops would still grow. Because the dew from Hermon was so fertile to the ground that the crops, the plants that were on the mountains would still grow because of the dew that would come down. Somebody not hearing what I'm saying. They, they, they didn't have to plant in the seventh year because the ground was so fertile, it was so healthy, it was so productive, it was so wonderful that it literally caused growth wherever it was. Now, now watch this. When there's unity among the brethren, y'all got to admit that's going to be some growth among the brethren. Because if you're strong, then I'm strong. If, if I'm strong, then you're strong. Why? Because the unity is not staying with one individual. It's spreading out that everybody can enjoy it. Everybody can, can benefit from it. Everybody can be productive. Why? Because it's unity. You think about it. You think about it. Those companies that when they have a unified force, Disney is still doing well. Even in the pandemic. Why? Because they have a unified force. There are other companies that are doing very well. Why? Because they got a unified togetherness. There's a oneness in terms of plan. There's a oneness in terms of productivity. There's a oneness in terms of how they do things. Why? He said it was healthy. Because what, what, what did God command? Blessing, life, forevermore. You got to remember, y'all. You got to remember that when God spoke to the children of Israel, he said, I'm going to take you out of Egypt. And I'm going to take you to a land that was flowing with milk and honey. It was a land that was lively. It was a land that they could make a good living. It was a land whereby there was a lot of life. It was a land where it was fertile. It was a land that produced a lot. They, they had life forevermore. Ooh, but when I think about us, 
God did not, did not give us the promise of what? But God gave you and I the promise of who? In other words, the promise for Israel is that they will live in a land flowing with milk and honey. Because there the Lord commanded the blessing of life for evermore. But ooh, this morning I come to tell you the reason why we ought to be unified is because God has given us a who. Yes, and in that who, we are now called brothers and sisters. Mm. And the good thing about uh, yes, uh, the group that God calls uh, brothers and sisters uh, don't need uh, no major qualifications. Uh, have I got a witness in here? When you think about it, any organization you are part of, normally there are criteria and qualifications you have to meet in order to be a part of the organization or fraternity, sorority, or even a job. But oh, this group I'm talking about, uh, the only qualification you need is to be a sinner. Yes, and the only qualification you need is to believe in a savior. And when you believe in that sinner, as a sinner, you believe in that savior, you're now brought into a unit. And uh, in that unit uh, is all kind of folk. Yes, uh, in that unit you got ex-liars. You got ex-backbiters. You got ex-prostitutes. You got ex-pimps. You got ex-cheaters. You got ex-alcoholics. You got ex-drug addicts. You got ex-unkind people. You got all kind of folk, but they brought together in unity. And I know you're asking the question, uh, how can it be unified? Uh, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who came in the form of a man, uh, came in the form of God, uh, but sought it not robbery to be equal with God. Uh, came in the form of a servant and made himself the lowest of the lowest slave and the bible says god now has exalted him given him a name that is above every name at the name of jesus every knee shall bow at the name of jesus every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God. How we'll be unified is all about Jesus. Can I get a witness? Jesus will. Yes, he will. Somebody listening to me today may not have unity with your brother. May not have unity with your sister but if you trust in the lord you can have unity have a god a witness and i know what you're saying how do we get that unity he died on a friday evening he died for your sin and my sin he was buried in a borrowed tomb Stay there all night, Friday night, all day Saturday. But y'all know what happened early. Will you say it with me, y'all? Early, early, early Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hand. Oh, you ought to pay attention. Oh, you ought to take heed how good and how pleasant it is. For brothers and sisters in Christ 
to dwell together in unity. The United States is divided, but the church ought to be unified. Republican Democrats are divided, but the church ought to be unified. Oh, you got unbelieving families that are divided. Don't want to talk to one another, can't stand one. But the church, we are the people of God. He says that we ought to dwell together in unity. I challenge you this week. Good shepherd, I challenge you this week to just think about somebody that you hadn't seen since March. Somebody you hadn't talked to since March. Think about that person and do something about it. Because you want to show that we are unified, that we're together, it's about oneness. Just take out a little time to call somebody. Yeah, listen, listen. Let's not be so selfish that we're working on our family, our biological family. Jesus showed us something. One day he was teaching the word of God and his brothers, they knock on the door. They say, hey, tell him, tell him to come here. Jesus, Jesus looked that way, but then he turned around and he looked at the crowd and he says, who is my brother and who is my sister? except them who do the will of my father. So I'm saying in the midst of you working on your biological family, your, your adopted family, your work family, don't forget the greatest family that God has given you and that's the church family. Come on, come on. That's the greatest family. Hands down, I don't care what anybody say, it's the greatest family that God has given us. Most of the folk I know, I know them because of Jesus. If it weren't for us being brothers and sisters in Christ, sisters and brothers in Christ, I never would have known many of the folk I know today. But because of Jesus. So make sure that you dwell together in unity. It is good and pleasant in the sight of God. Father, how we thank you again for your word. And we pray that it falls on good grounds in the hearts and the minds of these, your people. That each of us will make up the mind within ourselves to promote unity, oneness, togetherness, not schisms, not partialities, not our own little group that we don't let nobody else in, but to promote oneness and unity for all people in the body of Christ. Oh, God, help us to do that. And then, Lord, for those that don't know you, we pray that you would touch hearts and minds and even our own hearts and minds that we would share your good news and invite those that may not know you to be part of our family, that they can enjoy the unity, too, that comes from the life giver who is ultimately Jesus Christ. And so we thank you, God. And now we pray again for those who may not know you that you would speak to their hearts even now. That even in this invitation, by way of live streaming, that they will come to faith in Jesus Christ. It's our prayer we pray in Jesus' name. In his name alone we pray it. Amen. You may be listening today by way of live streaming or may again by, be by Zoom call. Whatever the medium may be, we want to invite you today to know the great unifier. And that is the person of Jesus Christ. Nobody can bring us together like God can. Nobody. Nobody promotes unity like God can. And he, guess what? He is not a respecter of any persons. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter where you've been. It doesn't matter what you've done. You can be a part of that family. So we encourage you today to be a part of the family of the Lord Jesus Christ. So if you don't know him today, today is a good day to get to know him. What must you believe about him? It's simple. You don't, you don't have to know math. You don't have to know biology. Um, you don't have to know anything about computers. You've got to believe that God gave his son to die. You've got to believe that that son did die. He was buried in a grave. And God raised him from the dead. God says if you believe that, what you recognize 
is that what you are acknowledging that there's somebody else other than you that can get you to God. You can't do it on your own ability. You can't do it on your own skill. You can't do it on your own criteria. You have to trust. You have to trust in his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you do that, the Bible says you can be saved today. So if you haven't trusted him, today is the day that you can trust him. Today is the day that you have that opportunity to have Jesus Christ as your Lord and as your Savior. So you may be with someone and just ask them, could you explain that to me? Could you help me to understand that a little further? Um, also, it may be that you would choose to call the church at 713-672-9847. We do have a website that you can go to, um, goodshepherd.org. We would encourage you to do that, please, ma'am, please, sir, because we want you to be part of uh, not not just the Good Shepherd family, but the, the, the real Good Shepherd family. And that is Jesus Christ, the family of Jesus Christ. So today, if you haven't trusted him, as the, this, this is your time. This is your moment, and this is your minute. May the Lord bless you is our prayer. Father, how we love you and thank you for this opportunity to once again praise you, to worship you, to preach your word. And then, Lord, again, to be able to share an invitation with those who may not know you, that they might come to saving faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. We pray again that you would show yourself great as you always do. In Christ's name we pray, and we pray it for his sake. Amen. 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 It's offering time. It's offering time. It's offering time. Don't forget, you want to give gsnbchouston.org. GSNBCHouston.org. That is the way that you can give if you're giving online. Other ways that you may give. Those of you that have your envelopes, don't forget you can always call your deacons and they will be on the way to get those for you. Uh, for those of us that are yet here, we do know that we have an opportunity to uh, place it in the baskets as we normally do. Uh, we have a couple of deacons that are here that they would be willing to serve you if you would uh, uh, regard them at this particular time. I'm going to ask Brother Edward if you would come. Uh, Zach, we got a mic for him, please. If you would come just to close us in, in a moment of prayer. We want to pray for sure for Demira Ford. This is the granddaughter of uh, Edolia. Uh, we want to lift her up in prayer. And we're also praying for our own sister, Elvinia uh, Lafleur again, who is uh, the wife of Pastor Lafleur again, brother, sister, brother Edward, who's here today. Uh, so many others that we're praying for. And so we're going to just close, close out with, with the word of prayer. And right before he comes, we want to do this, recognize our birthdays. We only got two uh, for this particular week coming up. Morgan Ben, Claude Davidson. Amen. Amen. And for those of you that may not have the program, listen to this. Eldridge and Bertha Doucette on August the 19th. They will have been married 53 years. 53 years. Lord have mercy. Bro, 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 do said, I'm on the way, man. I'm going to catch up. Lord, Lord, let me live and Jesus don't come back. But if Jesus come back, I'm going to just that tell you it's all over. It was a good thing. But, but until then, until then, until then. I pray again that you all will be living a prosperous life. I want to encourage those of you that will on this coming uh, Wednesday. Um, um, uh, Sean and I are going to do kind of a live thing as far as questions and answers. So I want to encourage y'all, if y'all can give us those questions ahead of time, uh, you can send those emails for the questions that you have. Send those to Julia, uh, just our church email. And, and, uh, or send it, yeah, send it to Julia and put Q&A on it. Just do it that way. That way we'll, uh, we want to address that. Uh, because after this week, we are going to meet on Tuesday night, both men and women, in our time of study of the Word of God. Uh, we're going to have, again, our, our Monday conference call, Tuesday, men and women. Our children, again, are going to have their, um, the, am I correct, uh, Stefan? They're going to have their lessons available on Wednesday, as they normally do. Uh, because after this week, the week of the 24th and the week of the 31st, we're just going to take a little break. We're just going to take a little break from our Bible studies, not church, not church. We already, already almost 
old break for church, y'all. We cannot, we cannot take any more breaks than what we're taking. Yeah, because I'm starting to hear some things coming out of some of y'all houses. Y'all got me nervous. I'm just telling y'all. Some of y'all got me nervous. It's like some of y'all forgetting about Jesus. It sounds like to me. So I'm getting a little bit nervous. So please, 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 please. It's only going to be a break from Wednesday Bible study. That's going to be it. And we're going to resume again the, uh, the second week in uh, September for our regular time. Uh, Sunday school will start in 10 minutes. And we're going to go, go today until about... about uh, We'll say right at 11.10, we will, uh, we will be done. No later than 11.10, 11.05, somewhere in that area. Brother Edward, would you come now and finish us off, lead us in a word of prayer? You come right here, Ed. Right here, right here, right here, right here. Oh, Lord, our God, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. Oh, God, we come to you at this time saying thank you, Lord, for your kindness, for your tender love and care. Thank you, God, for this day. For the Bible says, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. God, we're coming at this time in the city for those, oh God, that God cannot do too much for themselves. There are some that's listening this morning, might be in their houses, oh God, don't feel, not feeling so well. Lord, you know all about them, O oh God. Let them know God is there along with them, O oh God. May not be able to go and do the things we want to do, God, but you is a God that's omnipresent. You's everywhere at the same time, God. You know what's going on in people's minds, hearts. O oh God, we pray for those that are sick, O oh God. Those that lie down in the hospital, O oh God. Oh, God, bless my little sister, Elvina LaFleur, God. Lord, you know all about her, God. You know what she's going through even now, oh, God. But, Lord, we know that you made her, God. You know what's happening in her body right now, God. Nothing too hard for you, God. I know what uh, is going on, oh, God. But, Lord, you're able to keep her in your care. You're able to heal her body. Not only her, but all those that's lying down in hospital everywhere. Those that lying down at home, oh, God. Oh, have is upon them right now. Bless the whole entire world, oh God. Oh, we're infected, oh God, by this pandemic, I pray. But Lord, you know all about everybody, God. Those that have it, those that's positive, oh God. You know that they can be healed, oh God. Only by your power, oh God. Only by your time, I pray. Oh, have mercy, Lord Jesus. We feel for one another. We care for one another. We love one another. We respect one another. Oh, keep us in your care. Hold us in your hand. Those of us that are well, oh God, let us be concerned about those that are sick. Oh, have mercy, Lord Jesus. We always can call on you, oh God. But you are the one, oh God, that's going to make the difference. Thank you for this day, oh God. Thank you for this day, oh God. Thank you for this day, oh God. Thank you for the sermon we've had, oh God. Oh, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity, God. Let us be unified in you, I pray. Not just Yes, in talk, but in deeds, I pray. Let us help one another, oh God. Let us love one another, oh God. Let us care for one another, oh God. Makes no different who they are. Makes no different where they may be. Makes no different if we know them or if we don't know, God. We still care about them. We love you, Lord. Thank you again for Pastor Skinner. Thank you for the... Uh, the word we've had the same. Oh, have mercy, God. Pray for the Sunday school, oh God. It's going to start in a few minutes. Oh, have mercy, God. Let us be there and let us be concerned. Bless God, shepherd as a whole, oh God. You know every one of our members. You know those that are sick. You know those that are well. Lord, we care for one another. We care for one another. We love one another. Bless the choir that sung this morning. Bless everybody, our musician, everybody, oh God, that are here. Bless Zach, I pray. Oh, have mercy, God. Let him continue to do what he do, I pray. Oh, have mercy. He's a young man, oh God. Let him be concerned about your way, oh God. Oh, have mercy, God. Bless Stefan, I pray. Bless us all, oh God. Bless Mike, oh, Mike, oh God. Have mercy upon us right now. We love you, God. While we leave from this place, oh God, but never from your presence. Let it be with us throughout this day, oh God. Whatever we do today, God, that you get the glory out of our lives. You get the glory out of all that we do. We ask it all in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.